Um, okay, so let's set this up for everybody out there. Um, we are pumped today to have Kristen Vesley, head coach, University of Houston, uh, with us. She's, uh, you know, she's coaching one of our teams, member of Team Easton. Uh, Houston plays in the American Athletic Conference. Um, she's been coaching at Houston for nine years, head coach for the past four seasons. Um, I, I, I want to let the kids out there know kind of, you know, some of your accomplishments here, and then we'll get into your program. Tons of accolades. You played at OU, um, four-year starter. I, I think you're the Oklahoma leader in all-time hits, most hits in the season, Big 12 period, so you can bang it. 73-game um, errorless streak, first-team All-American 2006, fourth overall in the draft for NPF, and then won an NPF championship. Holy moly. Nice job, Kristen. Thanks, PK. Yep, you're welcome. So uh, tell us a little bit about the Houston Cougars softball program. Um, you know, it's actually pretty awesome. We're really sad that it ended this year when it did. We felt like we're in a good spot. I think we were 16-7, uh, and seven, um, receiving top 25 votes. So that part was a little uh, disheartening. But as a program, we're moving in the right direction. Every year we finished higher in RPI and where we stand in the national rankings. Um, you know, we continue to see that next year. I think that's going to be exciting. We're getting majority of our kids back. So uh, we're pumped. We're excited to get after it. I would, I would second that. I mean, yeah, you guys were 16 and five and cr right about to crack that top 25. I think you rode an 11 game winning streak at one point during the season. Your offense was firing on all cylinders. I mean, you guys were, were tanking the ball. I, I want to say, I was looking at some stats this morning, 38 bombs in the 22, 23 games that you played. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about that approach. Like, I mean, how, how do you turn on that engine in a year? So, like you, you know, we, we changed two things going into this year. Um, we hired Coach Elkins, who has a little bit more of a background in biomechanics. Um, she's from the ULL branch. Uh, she obviously, her accolades have stacked. She, in one year, hit as many home runs as we did in uh, 2018. So getting her on staff has really helped us move forward in a positive direction. And the other thing we did was switch to Easton. Um, and, you know, honestly, we talked to a couple of our players last year and said, you know, what do we need, you know, equipment-wise, moving forward, what should we be looking for? Is it, you know, batting gloves, helmets, bats, gloves, whatever? And their number one thing was, hey, we want the number one performing bat. And obviously, you know, that's Easton. So doing that along with Coach Elkins and the kids really buying into the new hitting philosophy – I mean, we skyrocketed. I think we're ranked fifth in the nation in home runs. Uh, we have an individual that's top 15. We're top 15 in – we were top 15 in uh, total runs So per game. I mean, those things are awesome. And we led the conference in home runs. Uh, Katie Ray Brown did a tremendous job for us and was ranked in quite a few offensive categories. So um, definitely pumped about the direction we're going in offense and as a program. That is That is good stuff. I mean – Let's talk about for a second, and you mentioned in there, I mean, confidence, right? So as a player, as a coach, you always want to be confident in your game, the product you use. Um, how, how do you build confidence into a player? And how do you keep that confidence that you guys have right now rolling into 2021 with a lot of downtime? So the downtime is going to be a challenge. I think um, talking to our kids, you know, we talk to them every couple of days just where they're at, what they're doing. And a lot of them are doing really good things to stay physically active and mentally healthy. Um, you know, confidence leading into next year with the philosophy, talking with Coach Elkins and what we really wanted to work on this fall was learning how to fail. Um, so we did a lot, a lot of different things this year. We hit off the machines and every couple of days we would attack a different pitch. And if we could conquer the machine or at least produce a good swing on the machine, you know, that should give you confidence because the machines were like facing the best in the world uh, with, with fast pitch. So, um, you know, drop at 70 miles an hour. How are you going to handle that? You know, rise at 70 and then working on the off speed. I mean, you're talking about every single day getting better and really challenging yourself on, um, you know, the, the process rather than the outcomes. Now, you may hit one ball hard day one but day 10 you're hitting 10 out of 10 and that that's really what we did to instill confidence and as soon as they got some of the success in the game you could see them really take off and run with it that's cool i mean and you know and you just mentioned process too i had another question but i mean the process so like 
softball is a process. It's a grind. It's a routine. Um, you know, what is that routine on day to day of a, of a Houston Cougar softball player? Like, what does that look like? Um, so it, we'll go in spring. Spring, we do two groups lifting. We strength and condition three days a week, um, which takes up practice time for us, you know, in that 20 hours of Kara. Uh, but with that, you know, we do uh, 30 minutes of small groups so that they get 30 you know, groups of three or four with a hitting coach um, and just really get some of that individual time before practice. And then we go to practice and we usually hit take about 150 to 200 cuts. Um, and then if they want, they have access to our new indoor so they have a key and they can go over there and get extra swings in whenever they want. I was going to talk about that later, but while you mentioned <laughs> your new indoor facility, I, I remember when I was out there a couple of years ago and you were like, okay, here's our cage now. Here's what we're yes, going to do. Yes. And now you've got it. So yeah. Tell everybody we're about the facility. Um, so it's the first full year, you know, it was completed about March. The last completion was March of last year. So it's five cages, uh, climate controlled. You know how sticky it can get in Texas. And sometimes the rain in Houston is uh, difficult to run a practice with. So we get to do that. Um, you know, it's five tunnels, 5,600 square feet. I mean, it has been a game changer for us. And uh, I think just amping the amount of swings, the quality of swings, not having to shag balls. I mean, all that stuff helps with practice, practice efficiency, as well as, um, you know, what we're talking about is confidence and outcomes. So, okay. So your players right now, um, are you guys are like, are they getting a workout regimen from you guys to try and stay ready for when they get back next year? What, what are you, what are you guys doing? So right now they got about a two week period off once we figured out season was just to kind of let their bodies heal. You know, uh, you know, this BK it season can be a grind. So if you're somebody that's played, you know, every day or and practice six days, you're talking about playing or practicing six days a week. Um, your body needs a little bit of a break. So we give them, you know, a couple weeks off and then we started grinding. We mainly start with our base with just strength and conditioning. So they're doing a lot of at home workouts with whatever equipment they have, uh, doing a little bit of running. But then again, just trying to maintain their fitness level, what we had in season, and then they'll get a little bit more challenging uh, workout in July to start increasing that so that they're ready to come back in August. Um, you know, hitting a lot of facilities are down here. Our, our campus is closed. So hopefully they're having access somewhere, but that's not a guarantee. Yeah. So we haven't really uh, – attack that. I know our pitchers are throwing about three days a week and that's exciting just that they're getting some, some work in on the fundamentals right. and really finding that passion because it's not overwhelming for them. Great word right there, passion. And another one that you mentioned in there, um, you know, like opportunity. So you could take this time as a time to really like sit around and mope. The season's over. It sucks. But what a great opportunity to heal the body, to work on new things, to just repetition, get a bunch of stuff yes. done and come back feeling ramped up and ready to roll. Uh, how, like, how do you motivate your players? You know, the great thing for us this year is that our culture's finally getting instilled. Like we have the right players. So they come in and they have a lot of intrinsic motivation. So this, during this time period, they know what they should and shouldn't be doing and uh, what drives them is being great. And that's exciting when you, you got the right recruited players you're yeah. hopefully creating the right environment so that they can kind of take that and run. Um, I remember talking to one of our seniors that's going to be returning next year. And uh, the text that she sent was just amazing. It just talked about finding the love again. And um, she transferred in from another school. And, and when you see that as a coach, it's just really exciting and so happy for that individual and the other kids to get their year back. Cause we really didn't even, we've been averaging about 60 games. So we didn't even really get halfway. Um, yeah. You know, when you get to hear that and see their passion and every day they start practicing even harder and harder um, this year. And it was it was exciting. So I think we're trending in the right direction, just getting that culture going. Um, and they they motivate each other like they want to be the best. So when you see, you know, some of your players separate the pack, the rest of them are trying to catch themselves, catch them. So it's that that is a coach. I mean, that's the hardest part. And you have the easy way out when they motivate themselves. Yeah, you're only as good as your weakest link. And I mean, I, mm -hmm. that, that self-motivation is, is crucial. So those kids watching out there, I mean, I got to imagine as, as a coach, like that's what you're looking for. You're looking for leaders. You're looking for kids who want to compete all the time and grind it out. 
I, I mean, I know those are things that you're looking for characteristics. What else do you look for in players when you're out there on the road? Because there's so many, you know, what are you looking for? Yeah, yeah. So for us, um, one thing that we talk about is effort. Like you can't coach when you they don't put full, forth full effort. So um, I refer to it as the dirty kid. When you walk into the field and you see somebody that's pristine, clean, and they may be good, but are they really giving their full effort every single play to try to get a ball or maybe to slide, take an extra base, you know, are – are you doing that if your uniform is sharply white as it was when you woke up this morning and mom did your laundry? Um, so for us, is finding that dirty kid that really resonates with our coaching staff and kind of having that underdog or blue collar work ethic mentality, because um, you could coach that. Being coachable is part of it, but if they have that inner desire that we're talking about to go all out constantly, I mean, I love when you're a coach and you say, oh, okay, tone it down a little bit. You know, that doesn't come out of my mouth often. I'm like, yeah, be crazy, keep going. So if you could find a kid that uh, really goes for it, like that's that's the exciting part for us is just finding the, find the dirty kid. That's and, right. Uh, I think you hit, you hit the nail on the head. It's just, you know, they love it so much. They want to do the extra reps. And the kids out there, like, what are you doing over this time to get better, whether it's reading – you know, reading a book on the mental game or finding a way to um, challenge yourself. And for us, we talk about um, the, the three best players on the team. Like you need to be in that three best. That's where we're going to continue to challenge and continue to move. And then where do you rank nationally? Like stop comparing yourself to just your team. Oh, I think I'm the best on this team. That doesn't mean anything. Are you the best, you know, center fielder in the nation? Are you the best shortstop in the nation? Like if you're comparing yourself to that and raising your bar and your standard, then you're going to continue to drive and challenge yourself and have that sense of accomplishment. But stop comparing yourself to little fish and, you know, oh, I'm better than little Sally. Well, that doesn't matter. Like how are you nationally? And if the nation doesn't know who you are, then you have you have some work to do. That is great motivation from uh, from you, Vez, right there. I mean, I hope those kids are listening because that's that's gold in in their heads. And I mean, a lot of these kids and probably yours too. This is finals time, so like, we got a minute left. So you got to get grades if you want to play. So oh, yeah. tell them how important grades are. So I'm going to brag on my kids a little bit and our academic advisor, Lori Selzer. Um, last year, we were ranked number three in the nation in GPA and all the softball programs. So out of 296 team so with the NCA you know the eligibility center grades are important and I say this frequently uh, there's free money out there called academic aid and if you can qualify a school you know that helps you become more valuable to your program that takes stress off your family so go to class get good grades um, and take it seriously in high school and it's kind of the building block for you to be successful in college. Vez congratulations on building a great program great academics great athletics Kudos to you. Love having you on Team Easton. Um, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, PK. Go Cougs. You got it. See ya.